It's 1941. German and Soviet Union troops have invaded Norway, Denmark, and Finland, leaving Sweden as the last remaining Scandinavian power. Sweden made the decision to be neutral during World War II, but this did not mean that they were oblivious to the world around them. They knew that even remaining neutral, they must be prepared for invasion by the technically superior nations encroaching on their borders. Due to these threats, in order to replace the now outdated American and Italian designed fighters that were still in service and being used in frontline combat, was requested in late 1941 to contend with the enemy air forces. Frid Wanstrom and Svenska Aeroplan AB then oversaw design work on a new aircraft. Starting with a single seat, single engine design, the crew eventually added a twin boom arrangement. To provide for better forward views out of the cockpit, the engine was set aft to the pilot in a pusher configuration. Not only was situational awareness excellent, but the nose assembly could now be equipped with a number of guns. The elevated fuselage spine and heavily framed canopy that the pilot was sitting under made it difficult to see out the rear of the aircraft. The wing was a straight monoplane with clipped ends, and the leading and trail edges of the outboard planes had a small sweepback. The two fuselage booms were connected by a central plane on the twin-finned empennage, and a completely retractable modern tricycle undercarriage completed the aircraft's original design, which was fairly advanced for its day. The preferred engine was the German Daimler-Benz DB605B 12-cylinder inverted V engine, which was used to propel the aircraft forward via a three-bladed propeller unit mounted behind the cockpit nacelle. To aid in aspirating the engine at the back, intakes were incorporated into the leading edges of the wings. These power plants would be constructed locally under license through Volvo Aero. In terms of weaponry, the aircraft was given one 20mm cannon, along with two 13.2mm machine guns, and these were all mounted in the nose assembly, and one 13.2mm machine gun per wing in addition to those nose-mounted armament. On July 30th, 1943, a prototype took to the air for the first time, and two more were built for the testing phase that followed. The plane received the J-21 designation, and Saab was in charge of its manufacturing. The J-21A-1 was the first operational quality form, and it was delivered to the Swedish Air Force starting in July 1945. Nonetheless, the European war had come to a close in May 1945 and the Japanese surrender in August would officially finish the World War. However, the Swedish Air Force acquired a supply of 54 J-21A-1 aircraft. At the time of its adaptation, the J-21 was the only frontline fighter of pusher configuration to be adopted for service in World War II. It was also the second fighter plane anywhere in the world to feature an ejection seat as standard. This design element essentially forced upon engineers by the fact that the pilot would be evacuating his doomed aircraft ahead of the spinning propeller blades. He simply could not roll off the wing as usual and hoped to clear the blades naturally. The first operational level aircraft with an ejection seat was the German HE-219 Eagle Owl Night Fighter, and ever since it has been a common feature on all fighters. The J-21A was not a complete success in practice. Since her pilots felt her to be heavy at the controls, and because the engine was a temperamental one that was prone to overheating which decreased predicted performance. The J-21A-2 was introduced to address some of the A-1 model's original flaws, namely, internal revisions were the primary focus. The J-21A was subsequently assigned to the J-21A-3 attack role by Swedish Air Service because it was no longer seen as a capable frontline fighter. Between May 1947 and January 1949, 119 were supplied to this updated specification, which incorporated the crucial feature of weapon hardpoints for storage of drop bombs, fuel, and rockets. A bomb aiming sight device was also fitted for accuracy, and there was support for RADO, or Rocket Assisted Takeoff, canisters for quick takeoff and climbing to altitude. 400 miles per hour maximum speed was attained with a cruise speed of up to 310 miles per hour. Range was 465 miles, and the service ceiling was 36,100 feet, as determined by an early study. The ascent rate was 2,950 feet per minute. There was still hope for the J-21, since in 1945, additional work was done on the line in an effort to fit it with a turbojet engine, the British de Havilland Goblin. And to get more out of the design than was originally envisioned, four J-21 airframes were set aside by Saab engineers for the testing phase and the aircraft was subsequently altered to accommodate a turbojet engine, with side-mounted intakes and a longer, deeper fuselage nacelle. 
With around half of the original design remaining, the design remains substantially true to the prop-driven shape, accelerating development and keeping costs low. The converted aircraft were designated as J-21R, and a prototype first took to the air on March 10, 1947. The Swedish Air Force commissioned around 120 of this new form. Early in 1950, the J-21R was put into service. It was equipped with the same armament as the J-21A, and for ground assault duty, additional modifications were made to allow it to carry a pack of 8mm machine guns or 8 14.5cm rockets. Once in service, the J-21R did not reflect much of an improvement for the line. The airframe and the configuration were essentially a technological dead end in terms of aerodynamics because the aircraft's top speed interfered with the necessary Mach number, and controlling the aircraft was still subpar. The air service was forced to reduce their intended stock of 60 fighters to half due to range issues stemming from the thirsty turbojet engine, which limited flight time to just 40 minutes. The J-21B was a proposed form intended to carry a battery of three 20mm cannons in the nose, as well as radar within its starboard side boom assembly. The model would have been powered by a Rolls-Royce Griffin or Dahmer-Benz DB605E propeller-driving engine, but this program felt not amidst the rise of jet-powered fighters seen in the period immediately following the end of World War II. The J-21 was unique for its time aloft in that it began operational service as a prop-driven fighter and ended its days as a jet-powered mount. Few other aircraft were led down this development path and managed to see useful service lives. Although a unique design, it sadly was overshadowed by more famous and contemporary designs of more involved nations during the war. What are your thoughts on the Swedish J-21? Do you think it was smart to try an experimental design for the new project, or should they have stuck with a more reliable and time-tested design? Let me know down in the comments. While you are down there, consider liking and subscribing as it helps my channel grow and I would really appreciate the support. Above, you can find a playlist all about strange or famous aircraft I have covered in the past, or you can watch this other video from my channel. Whatever you do, I hope you enjoyed, and I thank you for watching.